If you've been following this channel for a little bit of time now, you're probably aware that we've been asking and attempting to answer the question, who were the Puritans? And today we're going to get to the root, the true body, the meat, if you will, of this question by answering what they believe. Now, if you were, if you have been following along, last time we looked at the Institutes of the Christian Religion to look at what influenced the Puritans. And today we could look at a diff like several different manuscripts. We could look at the 1689 Con Baptist Confession of Faith. Uh, we could look at, um, obviously, the Belgic Confession is another classic. There are several others that we could look at. But we're going to take a look today at the Westminster Confession of Faith. And so today I have my copy uh, of the Westminster Confession of Faith, or the Confession, rather, which includes the Confession of Faith, the larger and shorter catechisms, um, the Directory for Public Worship with associate or Associated Historical Documents, and this is put out by Banner of Truth. And then I also have um, my pocket, my Puritan, my pocket Puritans edition of the, of the Confession. So, uh, yeah, if you're new, let me welcome you to Petra Publications. My name is Davis, and here on this channel, I typically just review books, and um, recently I've been trying to form that into a series so that they're kind of connected and thought a little bit more. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, I'm glad you found us, and uh, you're welcome to stick around. Um, thank you for watching. So, as I mentioned, today we're going to be looking at the Westminster Confession of Faith. This edition, and I'm, like I said, I'm going to be reviewing both, so this is going to be uh, interesting, but I thought it would be helpful to give two completely different editions. But this is 656 pages, and it includes a 30-page index on the back, including names, uh, scripture references, topical ideas, etc. Um, and then this this copy is 136 pages. Um, this one is cloth bound. And I'll go ahead and show you what this uh, this looks like. Looks pretty standard, typical for Banner of Truth. Again, a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and then this one is uh, it's kind of like a. It's most similar. The similarest, most the similarest, the most similar thing I could find to it was uh, Crossway's True Tone. This is their um, their little uh, pocket New Testament with the Psalms and Proverbs. Also, I forgot to mention while I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of scattered brain today. Forgive me. But all books and references that I mention in this video will be linked in the description below. So if you see something or hear something that you're interested in, uh, that should be provided and available down in the description. Um, so yes, that one is uh, kind of a, a faux leather. It's not real, but it is. It's a nice, smooth, soft feeling thing. Both of them are smith sewn which means they're going to last a very long time if well taken care of and they're both printed in the usa by versa press all right so that is um about the uh the actual the books themselves here i'll hold both of them up for a moment there we go and uh so now to give a little bit of like just a brief history of the Westminster Confession. So 121 ministers of the Church of England, 30 lay assessors, which were which consisted of 10 nobles and 20 commoners of various denomina denominational convictions, uh, were brought together and they were directed to create a confession of faith, uh, to create something that uh, believers could conform to and say, yes, we're going to hold to this, but also to understand doctrine better and to link scripture references uh, to those doctrines. Um, some some bigger names, if you will, bigger names, I don't know, uh, for uh, that, that were brought into this, uh, this uh, uh, assembly were Thomas Goodwin, John Lightfoot, William Bates, Matthew Poole, Thomas Manton, Thomas Watts, Samuel Rutherford, and of course, many others. Those are simply the, the names that, uh, if, if you read a lot of theology, you're probably uh, familiar with those with those names. Those are all people who were on, uh, on the assembly. And of course, as I mentioned, there were 121 of them, so many others. Um, but those are some bigger names. They started on July 1st of 1643, and they didn't finish until... 1652. That was to finish up the larger and shorter catechisms as well. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read 
uh, a few portions from the books themselves. There was a paragraph in the introduction which uh, Sinclair Ferguson wrote in the Pocket Puritans. Let me see here. Here we are. This is just a paragraph. He's addressing the idea that um, the Westminster Confession is Calvinistic, and he says, it is Calvinism in the sense that it finds its roots in a in and is influenced by the kind of biblical the theological perspective expressed in Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion, which is precisely why we reviewed that first, uh, which is linked in the description below. In this context, the Confession's soteriology, its understandings of the way of salvation and the nature of the Christian life, is deeply rooted in Christ. Salvation is seen as a gift from God that it becomes ours through faith in Christ and leads to a life devoted to the glory of God. Indeed, in some areas, assurance, for example, where the confession has been accused of differing from Calvin, it is not difficult to demonstrate how much it actually echoes the truths he had discovered by his careful exposition of Scripture. So that is a brief uh, understanding of the confession. And then also, I'm going to read a portion of this introduction. This is, um, let me see what page is this, 17... Here we go. So this is Thomas Manton writing, talking about the Westminster Confession of Faith. And he says, I do therefore desire that all ma uh, masters of families would first study well this work themselves and then teach it to their children and servants according to their several capacities. And if they once understand these grounds of religion, they will be able to read more other books more understandingly and hear sermons more profitably and confer more, judici more judici judici judiciously excuse me, and hold fast the doctrine of Christ more firmly than ever you are like to do by any other course. First, let them read and learn the shorter catechism, the, and next the larger, and lastly, read the confession of faith. And so I read that portion... And it reminds me of how the uh, churches that conform to the Westminster Confession really, truly focus on the children in the church. And I really, really appreciate that. Um, they, they do so in a way that just I don't see in any other church. And um, they do it in church. They do it at home. And it's because the whole foundation of this uh, of the Westminster Assembly was to train children in the way they should go and to bring them up uh, in, in, a, in a godly, Christian, God-glorifying way. And lastly, I'm going to read the back of this book, the, the dust cover, that is, uh, which is written by John Murray, who lived from 1898 to 1975, and this is just three paragraphs. It shouldn't take me too long to read. But again, it really describes um, what the Westminster Confession is in a way that I simply cannot word. But he says, Language fails to assess the blessing that God in his sovereign providence and grace bestowed upon his church through these, these statements of the Christian faith. The Westminster Confession of Faith and larger and shorter catechisms are the flower and fruit of some 15 centuries of creedal or confessional formulation of the Christian faith. This is just saying that the Westminster divines, when they sat at Westminster in the fifth decade of the 17th century, were the heirs of the labors of God's servants for 15 centuries, as these servants of God had striven to set forth the truth of the Christian faith and guard it against error and distortion. The Westminster Assembly did not abstract itself from the history of the church, but willingly and gratefully recognized itself as the debtor to all the wisdom and light that God in his providence had caused to be the deposited in the or had caused to be deposited in the exhibitions, expositions, and formulations of the past. The Westminster Confession and Catechisms are, therefore, the mature fruit of the whole movement of the creed formation throughout fifteen centuries of Christian history, and in particular, they are the crown of the greatest age of confessional exposition and Protestant Reformation.
or the Protestant Reformation. No other similar similar documents have concentrated uh, in them and formulated with such precision so much of the truth embodied in the Christian revelation. So that is the Westminster Confession. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention before I move on uh, is in these volumes, this of course includes the, the catechisms, but it also, in the confession itself, I don't know if you can see this properly or not, this, when it, when it cites the scripture, it actually puts in the reference, so you don't have to flip to a Bible. Um, it's kind of convenient. It is, I believe, Old King James which makes it a little more difficult. The Pocket Puritan edition, however, only shows the reference and not doesn't actually put the text in. So the, here you would have to flip to a Bible um, and try to figure out where they came to that conclusion. Um, really makes no difference to me. This is so convenient for travel. It fits right in my coat pocket, so I take it to church every week. It's just fantastic. I love it. Um, this one, the other one is great for home use and, of course, includes the other uh, other uh, documents, so also excellent. It just depends on what you're using the book for. Um, okay, so the Westminster, I'm going to get into the, the content of, of the Westminster Confession now. The Westminster Confession is based on the Apostles' Creed and ordered in that way. So it starts, you know, I believe in God the Father, um, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And then in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead and buried. And so I, I could keep going, but there's no reason. Uh, so it's following that uh, that pattern by doctrine, and then adding in some other things that aren't addressed in the Creed, um, and elaborating, um, expounding upon the ideas that are in the Apostles' Creed. Um, so, let me see here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read the um, the, the uh, chapters here, um, the headings. There are 33 of these, um, the doctrines thereof. So it says, Of the Holy Scripture, of God and of the Holy Trinity, of God's eternal decree, of creation, of providence, of the fall of man, of sin, and of the punishment thereof, of God's covenant with man, of Christ the mediator, of free will, of effectual calling, of justification, of adoption, of sanctification, of saving faith, of repentance unto life, of good works, of the perseverance of the saints, of the assurance of the grace and salvation, of the law of God, of Christian liberty and conscience, or in liberty of conscience, of religious worship and the Sabbath day, of lawful oaths and vows, of the civil magistrate, of marriage and divorce, of the church, of communion of saints, of the sacraments, of baptism, of the Lord's Supper, of church censures, of synods and councils, of the state of men after death, and of the resurrection of the dead of the last judgment. So those are the doctrines that are included in the Westminster Confession of Faith, which pretty much covers anything in practical living. You're not going to need anything beyond those doctrines, um, which is really quite amazing that they could do that and tie it all with scripture and many, many scripture references. Nothing they say is without, without warrant in scripture. Um, one thing I will say if you are looking to buy either of these books and you're asking, are these, you know, what kind of edition is this? Because there were amendments made. Um, what year was that? I should have that memorized, but I don't. Um, let's see here. Uh, 1788, and there's another one. 1788, I believe, is the American Revisions, which mostly addressed government and uh religious freedom, as you would imagine. So both of those, uh, even the pocket Puritan includes the old edition and then immediately follows with the American revised edition. So both of them include that. Um, so now I'm going to, let's see here. Oh yes. Let me read, um, the contents of this book, um, because it's not just the confession of faith. It's also these other documents. 
So it includes the Christian to the Christian reader, especially heads of families. That's uh, the Westminster Divines writing to uh, clergymen and to the heads of family, which of course is the man. Mr. Thomas uh, Manton's epistle to the readers. That's what I uh, just read a portion of. Acts of Assembly and Parliament. And then it gets into the book proper, which is Confession of Faith, obviously. Um, then it gives uh, the appendix, which is the, Mer the American revise, uh, Revisions to the Conf Confession of Faith, the Larger Catechism, the Shorter Catechism, the Sum of Saving Knowledge, the National Covenant, the Solemn League and Covenant, Acknowledgement of Sins and Engagements to Duties, the Directory for Public Worship of God, the Form of Presbyterial Church Government, and lastly, the Directory for Family Worship. And then... Uh, it says here, a table of the chief matters contained in the Confession of Faith and the Larger Catechism, which, of course, is the index. So lots of things are found in this book, very helpful resources there. Um, this book is actually, as far as I remember, it's actually kind of a pricey book, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's also a must-have if, uh, if you're interested in theology, but worth the money. So are there any better books on this topic? Of course, I addressed at the beginning of this video that there are many other confessions, many other places you could go. I personally, even with the Heidelberg, um, the 1689, uh, I'm going to have to say no. I think this is the best confession of faith, the best written, the best and closest to the Bible. It's my personal favorite. And I would recommend it to anyone. So would I buy this book? Either either one of these editions. Yes, yes, I would. Both editions are quality books that Banner of Truth puts out. Um, and of course, Banner of Truth always nails the publishing of their books. Always Smithsone, always Cloth Bounder in this case, uh, True Tone or Faux Leather of some sort. Uh, really well made. Uh, one is great for travel, the other for home use, as I mentioned earlier. Just great books. So, um, one thing I wanted to say also before I get into my final closing thoughts, and that is Banner of Truth. If you are watching this video, if you are paying attention, please listen to what I say. This is fantastic. Me and a friend, or a friend and I, were talking about this, and uh, we came to the same conclusion that we would love to have a larger and shorter catechism edition of the Pocket Puritans, if possible. Please make it happen. It would be just be amazing. And then you could have like a little slip cover for uh, for the books. I We both were just like, that would be fantastic because we love this so much. Uh, we just think it'd be great to have the, the catechisms in the same format. Um, so if that is possible, that would be just fantastic. Um, and then also, so here's my final closing thoughts. Uh, hopefully by the time this video comes out, I will be uh, releasing a, uh, a project that I've been working on for quite some time now, which is an audio type book uh, of the Confession of Faith, where I read chapter by chapter each doctrine, not only to make it more accessible to uh, the masses, but also to just as an aid as you're reading through the confession that you would have someone reading it to you. Sometimes it's easier to pay attention. You you grasp more um, in your mind if you have someone reading it to you. So hopefully, by the time this video comes out, which should be in a few weeks, um, I will have that project finished and can release them around the same time. So that will be coming soon. Um, and then lastly, if you buy the Westminster Confession of Faith and you have not read any kind of theology at all, and you haven't read anything of Old English or things of the past, then perhaps you could consider purchasing also alongside of the confession a commentary. And a, an acquaintance of mine, uh, Dr. Chad Van Dixhorn, has a fantastic uh, commentary on the Westminster Confession of Faith where he explains everything in a beautiful way. Again, linked down in the description below. The Banner of Truth just republished that work, and it is just a great resource, and he explains uh, and expounds upon what the Westminster Divines had previously written. All right, well, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, hopefully that was helpful in some shape, way, or form, and if it was, please let me know, know down in the comments below. I always appreciate hearing from you. 
Um, I hope that this, uh, let's see, I just said that, sorry, I'm running by memory now. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten to a form of, of doing this. Um, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you have a great week, and uh, Lord willing, I will see you again very soon. God bless.